So I think in the aggregate, we probably have sufficient capacity. And when I say aggregate, I'm applying if we look across the different vaccine platforms, including the inactivated virus vaccines uh, from Sinovac um, and, and many other more traditional platforms. But when we look at a disaggregate capacity, which, which means when we start thinking about do we have sufficient capacity for, let's say, messenger RNA vaccine or a certain type of an adenovirus candidate, that's when things start getting trickier. And uh, we don't know what the market equilibrium will be, which means how many countries will buy which type of a platform. Uh, that, in a way, will determine how quickly will we see access to uh, multiple countries which have so far not been able to access vaccine supplies. I also know that many countries which are part of the COVAX, the WHO-led uh, purchasing pool for COVID-19 vaccines, they are expected to start receiving their supplies in a couple of months from now, so sometime in uh, late February, March. So their uh, inoculations will, you know, will start in March, April, um, which is a positive development. But at the same time, I think we've got to keep in mind the fact that um, new variants are forcing us to think about you know, vaccines in slightly different ways. And we, we ought to be looking at vaccine capacity and vaccine platforms, um, not in just an aggregate sense and think about vaccines as a commodity, but to look at each of those products more specifically. But what are the chances uh, as we sit here today that we would achieve uh, at a global level herd immunity by the end of 2021? Look, if we only look at uh, the current production capacity that we have, globally um, and assume that you know, that's the only capacity we'll have and, and no more additional capacity expansion occurs in the next six months, then we are talking about at least 18 months from, from now before we can get enough supplies for, uh, for vaccinating the global population in an optimistic scenario and um, between 24 to 36 months in the more pessimistic scenario. So we are talking about going into mid of 2022 at our current manufacturing capacity. But what we're also seeing is that uh, many manufacturers are figuring out new ways to expand capacity. We heard from Sanofi uh, earlier today that they are gonna try and manufacture 100 million doses of the Pfizer Moderna uh, vaccines um, and, and, and free up their own capacity to do that. We are also seeing uh, some of the existing manufacturers creating new partnerships for manufacturing with manufacturers in developing countries, but also finding new contract manufacturers. So I think there is a, a, a lot of dynamic things under, under uh, play at this moment, which may expand the capacity and allow us to uh, compress the timelines from instead of 12 months to um, yeah, something like that.